and straight away me and my partner went with Garchi and then Abhirani and then uh, like I do a lot of many things. I have my own YouTube channel for programming. <laughs> I'm entrepreneur in residence. I'm a Udemy instructor and I also run work in progress one to one digital sessions. You might have seen me if anyone has seen me. So uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for two things. Number one, uh, I might use data scientist word a lot and computer science student word a lot. There's no hard feelings for any uh, people from any <laughs> category. It's just that uh, so this talk is all about from my personal experience and research that I've done so far, and also like as we work on client projects. So there are things that come and there are certain experiences that I would like to share, mostly from the data scientist point of view, and some from the computer science point of view. If uh, I ask you a lot of questions, <laughs> sorry again, <laughs> because when I'm sitting there, I ask speakers sometimes questions, but when I'm a speaker, I always ask questions to the audience. So my first question, how many here are data scientists? <laughs> students can raise their hands too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> how many are computer scientists? Or <laughs> 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 pursuing computer scientists in their <laughs> master's. <laughs> Anyone here is learning Python? <laughs> so, the theme about this is using Python, sorry, doing machine learning in Python. I am so used to Python that I cannot say it without having said it. So, machine learning without Python, and it's not like I'm not trying to say you guys go away from Python. I'm not going to tell you, like, just don't use it. It's just that there are alternatives that can be done more efficiently. There are alternatives that could be done in a more optimized way. So we'll just see two examples. And I'll start with very basic, like starting along with what is ML, um, right from that, and going all the way to how you can do ML without writing. So uh, it works very good. Yes. <laughs> so it won't be boring, for sure, 100%. <laughs> Uh, how many of these languages here you know? Who is like who who knows all of these languages? Just raise your hand. Do you think that these languages are more efficient for machine learning than Python? So I was I shared a quick uh, story. So I was in a group, like in a group discussion. So I, I, I run boot camps, and you know, like when you're in boot camp and there's a break, there are black screens, and people are like having their own breaks during the break time. But there were two people, two, yeah, two people. They were discussing about uh, their own uh, like routine life and everything. And one person said on the other side, like, hey, I like learn Python, like we have any tips and everything. The person on the other side said, like, look, if you are learning Python, you need to understand that machine learning is Python. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe during that COVID time, there were some setbacks, so maybe something was wrong. <laughs> so I just ignored it. <laughs> but, so I was just asking, like, could you just elaborate a bit? And he said, like, it generally it happens that when you're using machine learning, you end up using Python. And if you know Python, then you know machine learning. So, yeah. yeah. Sash. <laughs> so that brings to the first point, like, machine learning is not Python, and Python is not machine learning. So it's just a concept that, like, literally smart lights or anything you see around it, that's all machine learning, because it's literally artificial intelligence where you have input of data, and you have output of data in a smarter way, and that smarter way you call that algorithms. Example C, um, Alexa, more, more robust example. <laughs> So if you say anything to Alexa, she'll pick up exact same words that you said. So that's like taking input in a smart way. And the result you'll get would be 90% accurate sometimes. So that's like giving output in a smart way. So in a nutshell, like if this is all about machine learning, then 100% could be done in any programming language, provided the programming language is Turing complete. Do you know this term Turing complete? 
For those who don't know, in very simple words, theory complete language is one which can solve any computing problem. So most of the languages that we saw before, they were all theory complete. So, yeah. Anyone here struggles with doing predictive analysis for all the data science? Yes. <laughs> Prescriptive? What is so, oh, what is so, in simple words, predictive is when will it happen? Prescriptive is what will, what to do when that happens. Okay. So, it's very, very simple. It's very manual. Yeah. So, the challenge for, like, when it comes to writing algorithms, the main challenge is here. This thing is more about historical analysis. You can just get your data, aggregate it, and run some SQL query, blah, 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 and just show something in a fancy way and make your plans happen. Okay, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> and predictive and prescriptive is more where you use lots of mathematics, where you use lots of computation. It's where you 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 tell your brain that you would be have to do something. So these two things, they are generally are very easy in Python, like super easy. And why? Let me show you. So why people are using Python? So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you some images. For everyone, let's let's do something crazy. Let's make some noise. So, <laughs> if you understand every not that every single line of that code, say yeah like that. If you don't understand anything, just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> for those of the scientists uh, and also the data scientists, just for a moment, just make like believe like have that belief system that you don't know anything. Like be blank. So. some brackets, some <laughs> indentations, and some quotes here and there. <laughs> like, it's nothing more than that. And to make it more simple, like you don't have to worry about most of the object-oriented principles as well. I won't go into technicality of it, but when it comes to other languages, when you have to run them, it's a real pain because if I just take example of C++, you have to like, literally start from downloading the visual C and all those things, the compilers and everything and everything. Trust me, if you are a non-tech person or someone learning C++, if you're not doing CS50 or you're not a CS a computer science student, it's going to be super difficult because downloading it, running it, it's like a literal thing. So generally when someone comes for data science, they, again, I'm not demeaning anyone. It's just that they are coming from a background mostly from physics, mathematics, or some other background which is not computer science. Now, the main focus here is, uh, at least when I speak to students, I'm not a tutor, but I run boot camps when I speak with them, how your academics are going. The main thing I come across was, they say that we are taught Python because it's so simple and it, it's literally like a no-header for the standard. So it, it makes life super simple because as a data scientist, your focus is more on doing analysis rather than writing code. So if you have something like a ready solution, like even when I was having a talk with Andrew, the data scientist himself, he said like Python is so simple that you do a Google search, you get an answer. But if you do for our programming language, you don't get that easily. So that's the very first reason why we use Python. And the another, well, this reason is contributing to the second one, is that there are tons of libraries for data science. Like, uh, if you see some YouTube videos, there are people who have done like in 10 lines of code, like uh, virtual mouse, in five lines of code, something amazing. Like, you can literally like write something amazing in literally 10 to 40 lines max 
Well, if you're doing it in Java or C++, you see that like just printing hello world. I have to create a class, I have to create a main function, I have to do this, I have to do that, which is great from some perspective, but for a beginner, it's a, it's a real pain. So for that reason, you'll see many people, or at most of the time, when you're going for machine learning, you'll end up with Python. Then, if it's so amazing why I'm doing this talk, <laughs> there's no purpose of me to be here. Um, let me ask you a question. Is anyone here a uh, mobile developer or Android developer? If you guys have to include machine learning in your own native app, how will you do it? Google. Google. <laughs> Why would you go with Python? It's more marketing. It's more hard. So the reason is like when you're doing a machine, like when it comes to real world projects, clients want something very cheap. They want something working, and they, because as a like as an entrepreneur myself and a developer, when I put an entrepreneur hat, I want to save every uh, resource I put in that project. And as a developer, I want to make use of every resource I put in that project. So when it comes for a client, they are more focused on making sure that if it works, then don't take other approach. So I was working on a project which was native Android application, and they require like heavy image processing. So I just suggested like let's use. OpenSea in Python service with fast API and just like have it as a serverless function. And they're like, no, 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 it's like too much of things and you have to take the time. You don't understand how this is. Exactly. <laughs> so I had to end up using native Java with OpenCV, we Google developed it, and it was a terrible pain. But it was amazing. Like, even when I was doing undergrad, uh, like it was to raise hands of and some students. Did you guys ever wrote any machine learning algorithm from scratch without using any library? Yes. Then you refresh it at some point. Yeah. yeah. So if you write it without any programming language, sorry, with programming language, especially algorithms, they're super fast. They are super accurate when, when it comes to writing in scripting language. Um, in my assignment, uh, there was a problem statement to write a k-means algorithm using C++ and Python. So it was option actually, or Python actually. I took C++ and for a change after that was done, I did the same thing in Python without using any library. And surprisingly, the C++ one was giving like fabulous results. Even the libraries you guys are using, like SKLearn or any machine learning library in Python, they're either in C or C++ and they're wrapped in Python, either using Cypher or some of their compilers. So for that reason, like, when it comes to not using Python, the very first reason you shouldn't use it because it's an interpreted language. When you're doing something very time sensitive thing, at that time you might end up maybe with some garbage values for um, your algorithm or you might end up with a slow algorithm. So it's best to write it as a, as a programming language. And as I said, like, I just take example of Java, like the native application, but if I take example of web applications where you have uh, fast API, you have Django, you have Flask for writing web applications in Python, but if you already have a system that is not written in Python, and if you want to get a resource for that, it's very costly because you're adding a tech stack in your project. You have, you need to find someone who knows that tech stack. You need to find someone um, who you can trust. So it's, well, you know how the hiring process is. So in that way, like if you want something Quick, if you want something uh, that works as an MVP stage, or even if you want something as a robust product, you can still use other programming languages for that. So, if I go to the next part, like if, what do we do ML without Python? <sighs> Any guess? With slightly more difficulty? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's yeah, you know what I'm doing? SageMaker. Oh, yes. <laughs> TensorFlow JS. Uh, so there are like tons of libraries you can like, get the job done for you. And if I go for just one instance, you can simply do script queries. <laughs> yeah, so how many here have written SQL queries with operators? 
So if you have done that, then you understand that it's very, it's more of like a easy thing if you are used to it, to do a descriptive analysis just by aggregating the data you have. Most often you'll end up using a CSV file, which is fine. It's actually a data itself. So if you're using a solid framework, it has its own functionalities to aggregate the data how you want it or compute the data how you want it. So most often you, you, you don't need Python for that. Like you can do it in any language. You just need a server-side language to do it and it's, it's doable. So there's nothing, literally, literally there's no rocket science in that. Next, uh, so that was the basic level. Next was where you could use the libraries in those languages. So for instance, in PHP, there is Ruby XML. Anyone know this language? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Okay. So for Ruby, there is machine learning in Ruby and TensorFlow for JavaScript. So these libraries, they have their own drawbacks, but if you're, as I said, if you're doing an MVP or even if you're doing a robust product, they are very good enough. SageMaker by AWS is another good option, but it's costly. Firebase ML Git is mostly for native applications, mostly in Android or iOS, so that's a really good, like, super best, uh, I would say, in terms of Google ML, because I personally use Firebase, uh, Firebase ML Git, and I find it way easy to use than Google ML Git. So that was intermediate level. Next, you write your own algorithm in any given computer language. But there is one thing which is gonna be like a solid game changer in the future, that's gonna be WebAssembly. Have you heard about this? So in a nutshell, WebAssembly, so computers, they are like smart dumb machines. They only understand one and zeros, which is called, which you call as machine code. So programming languages, they compile whatever you write into machine code, scripting languages, they're integrated, that's why they're slower work. So what WebAssembly does is, as browsers don't understand any of this, the browser only understands HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and search itself. So what WebAssembly does is, it converts your, like whatever you write it, it's mostly Rust or C++ or C Sharp, any programming language, and it converts into a machine code that you can straight away execute in the browser. One example of that is if you search on internet about WebAssembly model for Google, which they're currently working on to write machine learning models using WebAssembly, you can straight away call with JavaScript functions. That's gonna be like a super convenient thing from a developer experience point of view. Not sure from the, oh, from the performance point of view as well because it's already a machine code, so it won't be that much of a hassle. And that brings me to some examples. <laughs> can you even understand this language? Any guess why I choose this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you search on internet and if you find, if you just type PHP, you will get PHP is dying, PHP is this, PHP is that. Well, lots of things. So I purpose, I, I like to go against the flow. So I chose this language and thought, okay, let's try to do machine learning in this, and let's try to do it exactly how you do it in Python. So in Python, the general drill is that you will get NumPy. You will get some kind of PyTorch, or you will get uh, sklearn, or pandas. You will import the files. You will run those uh, library functions. You will run quick up an algorithm. I'm using random forest for this. So, do you want me to go through this code, or just put it like and save it? <laughs> okay. So, in nutshell, what this is doing is it's just taking a data set which has around 300 rows. It is just taking some input and finding in which country the car is manufactured. So if I uh, go forward, and so that was the brief. Anyone heard of random forest algorithm? Yeah. Okay, so in nutshell, it's same like, the, so there's an algorithm known as decision tree, which gives you a decision whether you should go with left or whether you should go with right, like labels. Random forest, on the other hand, is collection of lots of decision trees. So for instance, suppose uh, I'm going to eat a pizza. <laughs> so I, I asked Ryan, uh, which one is nice? He says, uh, vegan? Sure. Yeah. So he is one tree in that forest who is saying vegan. I ask, uh, Andre. He says, vegan? Oh! Andre <laughs> 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 yeah. says, he says cupcake. Yeah. So, so that becomes like a second mode for vegan. And if I ask like other people also and put them in the forest, like assume that each one of them is a vegan in a forest, and the one voting the most, I would 
use that visa or eat that visa actually because that's more accurate, that's more trustworthy of COVID. So that's all random forest is all about. And if I show you, okay, how many of you think that Python will outperform this? Just raise your hand. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. You mean that Python will be efficient? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, it is. Okay. It probably, it probably, probably <laughs> beats Python. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry. So one is done in fast API, the other one is done in Laravel. I haven't considered the request response time because that would add more space or more overhead. So I just consider the function running time for each of these frameworks. In that case, like actually a very very small cheating here. It's not worth eight, six, seven, nine. Actually it's slightly lower than that, but I want to keep it because some of these were same. So I said, okay, let's not, because it's PI data, and I don't want to take PI and put it PHP data in. <laughs> so let's keep it simple. Let's keep it, like, if it shows one number, okay, let's keep that as an average and just keep it. But PHP was consistently showing higher accuracy for some reason. And interestingly, like, if I tell you how I, I, I did wrote the Python code, I used all the libraries that a normal person will use if they're doing machine learning. For PHP, I just use Ruby Kernel and Generally, when you're using libraries which are done by people, they're more efficient. And if you're using something of your own, they're a bit questionable. It's not that I don't trust myself, but it is like that because it, many brains are better than one brain. So I thought like Python would be better, but somehow PHP outperformed us. So that was an example of the average time and accuracy. And next, what, like any guess, which will be the next language. C sharp. Okay. The next one is simple TypeScript. <laughs> Anyone here know Vue.js? Yep. So this is using TensorFlow model. So what it does is it literally like scans video, detects the object cross border around it. Surprisingly, this was faster. And I don't like I expected because it was running in browser. I thought like generally when you run something heavy in browser, things get nasty. Your browser gets hanged, especially if you are using Internet Explorer. <laughs> That's a different story, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So if I show you some output of it, like oh is it just a continuation of code? Da, 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 da. So, is this code, is this stuff recognizable? <laughs> so this is how it works. Like it's detecting with almost 100% accuracy and, oh yeah, you know. So in that way, I think like if I have to do something as an MVP, and if I have to do it in like a, for a web application, and if I know either of these text that, I can just pick the output and get done with it, and have something working or functional product, 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 project, service. Well, these are my examples, but there needs to be solid example that industry is using. Like, it's not it should be the companies who are using it. I can do anything. So, anyone here is chess player? <laughs> Any guess what chess.com uses? For some reason, <laughs> like, it uses PHP, it uses Java, it uses JavaScript, it uses Ruby, it uses C, which is shell, which is a terminal language. It uses Objective-C, which is somewhat even questionable, but still used. So, if you see, like, and if you have played chess on chess.com, which I believe there are some places I know, if you play at any level or if you play a bot, who is a replica of a chess player, they exactly play like that, and doing that level of machine learning is super complicated, like you have to consider lots of patterns, because there are like thousands or millions of, 
thousands and thousands of ways to win in chess and getting all that pattern, making the next move. It's really a super complicated operation. And if you're not using Python, then that means it's possible. <laughs> so, Amazon. Where is Python? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this isn't Java. This isn't Amazon. No, they're front end stuff, but it's okay. But there's no Python. So it's not just like they don't want to use it, there are good reasons for not using it. If I take examples of other companies like Instagram, YouTube, Udemy, they are heavily dependent on Python on the other hand because they have that base with Python. These people, they have zero base with Python because if I time travel in 2013 to 16 grade, that was actually the main period when Python was picking up for machine learning libraries. But before that, like it was like mainly the programming languages. And if you have companies which are, because they can change it over, they have money. But if they are not doing it, that means there's some sensible reason to not use it if you don't want to use it. Uh, we're being honest, but that's a fact. So, but with on that notice, uh, would like to connect with me. That's. QR code which connects to all those private Koji links on LinkedIn, YouTube, everything. And if you are here tomorrow, I'm also doing a talk tomorrow for Techland from 12.30 to 1 for next chess, which will be asked to pay. So that's all. Any questions? <laughs>
is easy to learn, yeah. and then Python has the libraries as your kind of order for yeah. how, why it's Python. To me, it's the other way around. I'm wondering why you put it that way around. Because I actually find Python harder to learn oh. than the other languages. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, same. And Python, <laughs> Python got the libraries, which then made it the one to use. Just yeah. like before Python, it was Perl. Yes. And Perl had CPAN. And that's why, C, why Perl was used. And then it was R for a while. R has cram, and yes. that's why it was used. Yes. So well, why did you put it that way? Can I ask you, in your respect, are you a person who used to write code with braces, curly braces? What, what's that? Curly braces. Like, like, like Python with curly braces? Oh, no, no. Like language that uses curly braces, semicolons. Yeah. Yeah. For those people, Python is horrible. The main reason is indentation. You need to keep track of all of them. It's like a nightmare. Yeah. If someone learns, you know, my, my problem with Python is that yeah. it's so much syntax. It is, and also if you can give take example of like coding Java and coding Python, it's as difficult to choose positive Java because I have more control in terms of static typing over there. I also have more control to that string, even the string rules. On the other end, if I have to do it in Python, I only do it if I just want something from the dictionary or something where I just want to do a quick working prototype. Because that's the main reason I took it first. Like, it, I don't want to say like, oh, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to say go away from it. It's like, if it serves the purpose of doing things in a more simple way, then it's best to learn that. Because at the end, like, it's all about experience. But if it doesn't serve the purpose, so that's why I started with something which is serving the purpose and then not serving the purpose. <laughs> that makes sense. I think so. I, mean, I think uh, if we say like this, that uh, when we see from the point of view of non-tech persons, you are trying to get into an AI, uh, then for non-tech persons, uh, it's more uh, like uh, easier coding if it's in literal. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's. I think that's the reason for uh, Python uh, to, to be in front and I uh, PHP or Java. I think that. I, I, I don't think that follows. I mean, uh, if you see that, uh, if I just see so, my so I'll say the reason I don't think so, it fails, it follows, is, is you're saying that uh, if someone's trying to learn, yeah. they're going to learn the language that's easier. But they're not going to learn the language that's easier, they're going to learn the language that's taught. And the language that's taught is going to be the one that people have the libraries to teach. So it's going to be the one with the library, it's not anything about the nature of the language. Uh, it is also the nature of the language because if I take other languages, uh, and like for example, again, Java, there are so many libraries in that. There, like nowadays, there are thousands just in Python. So if you have resources there, then why not off there? The main reason is this. When you're writing a code, like for a layman person, it's mostly how less technical it is, how easy to learn it is. And for some reason, not recently, yeah. for some reason. It's Python, which is very easy to grasp, mm -hmm. very easy to understand. So even though like, uh, even if it's a pain in some way or the other, even if it's uh, difficult, it's all about the context. And for some reason, the majority of context goes with Python. Yeah. I think we have time for maybe just one more question. Yeah, sure. So, I think from the conversation we've had in here, we kind of agreed that Python at least has this kind of momentum at the moment with a lot of development tests and packages going into machine learning. Mm -hmm. Do you think that momentum is something that we'll be able to slow down and change and move to a new language? And if you think there's a new candidate kind of language that could be kind of like where the future of NL development lies, which one do you think it would be? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> so if I give you a, like, a straightforward answer, it's true that Python will be there, it's gonna stay for long. But if I give you like trend food answer, like according to the trend, somehow like TypeScript is dominating the language uh, stack. And if things are done some way, which are done in Python, it can be done in TypeScript, then obviously it will like that will be the trend. Mm -hmm. But in case if they're not as efficient as they are done in Python, then because it won't be a trend. It's like there are, there are several languages which came and went. Somehow, TypeScript is not one of those, it's still there. If I say it in other words, JavaScript actually, it's not one of those. So 
if WebAssembly really comes in, if it just picks it up, then definitely that would be the trend. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't fix it up, then we will do what we are doing. <laughs> right. So for the sake of time, let's give them a round of applause.